Welcome to the Please Remain Calm podcast. I'm Ben Gonzalez. And I am Daniel Gonzalez. And what's new, bud? What's what do we new? got going? First of all, let's do it. First of all, the views expressed here are our own. They do not reflect the views of the Los Angeles City Fire Department or the Los Angeles County Department of Health Services. Thank you for taking the lead on that before I jump uh, in. Yeah, and I, I figured, I would, I, figured I would, man. Yeah. Uh, while I'm talking too, before you get going, guys, if you're listening to the podcast, please go and like this episode. Um, subscribe to the podcast if you haven't. Give us a five-star rating for the podcast, please. It really helps us with placement on uh, on all the podcast um, uh, outlets and on, on YouTube and all that stuff. So please uh, subscribe, like, rate the podcast. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, thank you. <laughs> what else? <laughs> What's going on, dude? Dodgers are winning again. Yeah. Got my fucking new hat. Yep. See that? Mm-hmm. Back on the trail. I've got a couple guys that follow me uh, on my personal page from uh, San Diego, like young guys coming out there. Uh, one guy just got hired. Yeah. Uh, San Diego Fire. Um. Uh, but man, those guys are shit talking this year, San Diego. Oh, really? Oh, Slam yeah. Diego? Oh yeah. Woofing. So like, uh, they swept us, right? Yeah. Best. I almost went too, and uh, I was like, ah, yeah. better not right now. It's a rough one. Yeah. And so sure enough, right after, right after the uh, the last game, you know, he's messaging me on there. I go, dude, just soak it in, bro. Soak it in. Let this feeling just kind of flow over you. Yeah. Absorb it. Let it feel good. Because it's going to feel like shit when we win the division again yeah. at the end of the season. Every dog has his day. Yeah. They went to the World Series, what, that one time? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so um, anyway. Fuck, we want to get into it? Yeah. We were going to talk we, about a little bit of uh, defensive emergency driving, which is we, we can also call that offensive driving. Because emergency driving, you get to use the whole road. Yes. But there are things to notice and little things that you should know about what we're doing when you see, you know, big red ripping down the street and you got to get out of the way. Okay. So if you are a civilian and you've never driven emergency and emergency apparatus, emergency with lights and sirens, please turn this episode up and listen to every word I say. Okay. Cause I'm about to vent every frustration that I've ever had about, uh, driving emergency. Yes. And then I, I've got a pretty, uh, I'll, I'll tell you guys about my $5 million lawsuit, uh, accident that oh, we got we got a whole thing i have a feel-good story of instant justice yeah, and emergency driving perfect yeah we got the, we got the evoc stories yeah let's we do uh it. so we just had this training the other day um you know uh the fire department the majority of the stuff the, the majority of the of the of the work that we do you know housework and stuff like that but the majority of the time is spent training on whatever giving a drill on a piece of equipment you know, uh, out walking roofs, you know, um, walking through buildings to get an idea of what they look like, whatever it is. We're tr we train a lot. And the purpose of that is just, I mean, it's obvious. We, we never know what we're going to get called to go out and do. Yeah, we, exactly. we never know on each day what's going to happen. or what. And, so and it's a good thing that you say that because I think people lose sight of that sometimes. Like, oh, yeah. literally, there's things... Like, you know, you call the police for, you know, you call whatever service for, and then there's everything else. And all those things, people will call the fire department for that. Oh, yeah. Or they'll man. call 911 for it, and it can be anything. So the range of things that you have to be prepared for at a moment's notice is humongous. We are and the catch-all. People catch -all, don't comprehend dude. it sometimes. We yeah. are the catch-all. Because you don't have time to, like, oh, shit, let's get the book and look this up and, oh, what do we do? Everyone is supposed to instantly know without even really talking about it, where yeah. the stuff is, what you need, and you have it right away. But that is not by accident, you know? That right. is by design. Um, uh, you know, um, the location of equipment uh, throughout the department on trucks, on rescues and stuff like that is not uniform across the board, but in general, you know that the forcible entry compartment is this compartment. You know, you yes. know that the... Uh, the jaws are going to be in in uh, or the maltro is going to be in this compartment, you know, in general, you know where these things are. Right. And I remember being impressed by dad with that and like wondering, like, man, you're not really like this at home. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, like I've seen the garage, dude, I've seen you like your your tool set and everything. Yeah. But like his rig was like perfect. Yeah. All the time. Everything was labeled in, in its spot, polished, like ready to rock facing you. And and yeah. and that's by design, because when I need this piece of equipment on scene of an emergency, I need it right now. You right. Know? I don't need 
uh, I don't need you to go open this compartment. Shit, it's not in there. Open this compartment. Shit, it's not in there, right? That's why one of the first uh, drills that you ha- that you get at a, as a rookie or as a new fireman anywhere at any inventory. fire station is an inventory drill. Yeah. And when I say inventory, man, I'm not talking about like, oh, this is the Hamaltro compartment. You know, no, <laughs> you are you you know exactly the the model number of each uh, individual piece of a, a, attachment equipment that's in there. You know, um, you know um, uh, h- how to use each one. You know, um, you know just like specs on each thing. So you'll be going through and you'll say, okay, in this compartment, we have you know um, a bag with assorted um, uh, wrenches, and in that bag we have a crescent wrench. We have a five eighths. You know, and you start yep. you break down the list of specific wrenches that are in that bag. Yeah. So it's not just like, hey, this is where the wrenches are. Hey, this is where the sprinkler kit is. It's like hey, this is the sprinkler kit, and in that sprinkler kit, you have four of these sprinkler heads, six right. of these sprinkler heads, eight of these sprinkler heads, right? Right. And you break down each and everything. Yeah. Um, that is all part of just being prepared for anything 24 hours a day. Right. And, and you know, I've talked about in the past how, you know, newspapers will, like, print our salaries and stuff like that and, and talk shit about, like, the overtime and, and how, how much we get paid. Uh, and and even even as a firefighter working in a busy spot, you know you look at other other stations, you know like like uh, up or up toward Malibu and different parts that are just a lot right. slower, and you're like fuck man that guy's getting paid the same as I'm getting paid, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, he's just as prepared for yes. any emergency as I am, and they also have the times where they're earning their money. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Earning their money and. To get to a spot like that, also you have to have done your time, right. and you know what I mean. It's not easy to get. But that, to a, that's a, the a thing too, though. Like that, but yeah, yeah, but like like you'll say, like the harbor guys go down there to retire or something, but yeah, and they get some crazy incidents oh, sometimes, yeah, dude. And they got to get down, they got to sure. dive, or they you get like ninety nines up fires, you like, get ninety nines up in uh, Mulholland or something like that. You know, yeah. it's, they they get one or two uh, 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 a shift, but then you might get one of a those mansion house fire, a, yeah, that's a ripping set mansion on a fire hill that's and, like the size of a commercial, yeah, and it's on a hillside, so it's uh, you yeah. know below grade on fire. On a tiny like street where those, you can't park, yeah, those are extremely challenging fires, mm-hmm. man. Extremely challenging. So yeah, don't think for a second that people aren't earning their money anywhere they're working. So all of that preparation that we do, okay, all of the we're ready, and then the emergency happens. My son is having a heart attack. You know, um, we 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 need we need the engine. We need the rescue. The faster we get there, time is of the essence. Right, right. Everything is triggered to to start moving towards saving this person's life. Okay, all of that preparation and all of that excitement and all of that good intent goes right out the fucking window if you can't get there safely. Okay, so driving emergency is one of the most important operations we do, not only for the patient or victim or house fire, whatever that we're trying to get to that needs our fucking help, right? Right. Not only for them, but for the average uh, civilian out there just driving to work or driving to go get groceries or whatever, right? We're Mm -hmm. responsible for their safety also, right? right? And as a driver, I'm responsible for the safety of everyone on my rig. Exactly. There have been plenty of times when accidents have occurred where uh, firefighters were ejected. The rig rolled over. Firefighter was ejected. There have been incidents across the country where both firefighters in the backseat were ejected and killed. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and the engineer was charged with homicide, you know, negligent homicide. Um, Crazy. Or a uh, 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 vehicular manslaughter, I mean. Wow. Uh, it, it, there's examples of it all across the country. It's a uber, uber important job to be a driver. Okay. And obviously, there's different rigs. You know, the 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 tr- you, you drive the truck. You know, uh, yeah, you a lot different than than you do the um the engine. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to give yourself a lot bigger berth, wider berth for turns and stuff like that. And the rescue, the same thing. You know, you drive each one differently. Yeah, right. Now they have evoc training, right? Which is um uh, basically like a course that teaches you how to properly drive uh, emergency. I mean, you're saying now, but. We did, they've had we it, did it 20 had it, years ago. They've too. had it for yeah. a while, but yeah. but like like me personally, like I'll get into my my accident story yeah. later. But in that in the um, is this something you do like once a year still or dude? I st- to, to this training that we went to yeah. uh, a couple days ago. It's the first time I ever had an evoc training. Oh really? Evoc, a, evoc with the fire department? Evoc period. 
Ever. You didn't have Evoc as I, a private? I never had Evoc as a private, no. I had Evoc within like two months nope. of starting. Never had Evoc. Yeah, there's a big uh, uh, CHP training center up in like Silmar. Yeah. Or off the, uh, where the 405 and the 5 are. And they have a big flat pad and a track. And they train you through everything. And they, have, they make the pad a, a slick pad. And they, have, they show you how to do like, uh, you know, spin outs, how to regain control when you, um, what is it? Water plane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, hydroplane. Hydroplane, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, all, all of that, dude. Yeah, nope, didn't have any of that. My first, that's my wild, first EMT dude. job was um, uh, uh, Aegis Ambulance in Pasadena, right? Yeah, and it was um, uh, dude, I just I started working, and it was like, cool, you're in, G- go be an EMT. That was it. I started driving. Everything that I knew about driving, uh, somebody just told you? No, no, no. no. I, like what? E- even in EMT, there were sections in the book, you know, yeah. about like the siren, what, which siren. You have to get that little green card from the DMV, don't you? I thought we had to like pass the thing for that. No, it was like a, like that a written was a, thing. No, that was a medical. Oh, that was just medical. That's that was right. Medical That's thing. right. It had nothing to do with driving. Yeah, they never, I never did any driving tra- I, I know, driver it, training. It was right? a long time ago, but yeah. So uh, in this accident that I had, you know, in the in the lawsuit that followed, in the mm. depo- you know, two depositions that I gave, that was one of the things that came up. Well, you never had any emergency driving training. Whoa. I'm like, nope, yeah. nope. Well, you know, w- what experience do you have driving? Well, I've been driving an ambulance for 20 years. You know, I've been on the fire department. Or back then it was, you know, si- 17 years or whatever, 16 years. Shit, that was longer ago. I guess this accident was like eight years ago, nine years ago. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, so I, n- I never had any of All my training that I knew about driving was just from – other drivers that, so that gave me tips until, on how to do it up until what this was a week ago and and, and learning and learning the um uh you, you know just uh uh when you go through basic emt training right. there's like a chapter or half a chapter yeah, driving, driving in the book so yeah. I, all my knowledge was just straight from emt school basically yeah. right but but um you know and then you drive and you get in situations and you learn how to you how to probably because you also have to drive you, differently. Yeah, that's what I mean, though. So you oh. knew the regular rules before you started oh, doing it. Of course. It. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, it, yeah. You're just, it's yeah. just driving yeah, exactly. until you're driving emergency, right? right when yeah. you're driving emergency, there's very ba- real basic rules. Mm-hmm. You always got to pass on the left, right? Yeah. That's why when you, as a driver, as a civilian, when you see lights coming, pull your car to the right and yeah. stop. Yeah. Don't okay? just stop in front of us. Don't just stop in front. Don't pull to the left. Never. Okay. I've had people pull to the left, so I pull farther to the left, and they've pulled completely into oncoming traffic, perpendicular to traffic. Insanity. Just, what are you doing? You know, I'm sitting in the back just watching this like like a movie, you know, in the in the windshield. Like, what is this idiot doing? Now I could very easily go around to the right. I could do that. Yeah. Right? Now what if you decide I'm gonna go I'm gonna do what I'm supposed to do now and go over to the right and exactly. hit me. Whose fault is that? Is that mine or yours? Exactly. I got my lights and sirens on. I'm supposed to pass you on the left. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I can't explain to to um the insurance that you're an idiot and yep. pull to your left, you know what That's I mean? And why then pull to your right. If you listen, you'll hear a little break in the siren and somebody say, Please pull to your right. Yes. I do that a lot. You have to. And depending on uh depending on um how bad my day is going. There might be a little <laughs> anger in that voice too, but, but please people, please. C- Cause another thing people do is um, they'll either stop and turn on their blinker, their uh, hazards. Yes. For some reason, like, or slow down in front of you with the, their hazards. Yeah. Does that, do you think I can drive through you because you have, hazards? Right. pull your car to the right and stop. Cause another thing people do is they pull to the right, but they keep going the same speed or they just slow down a little bit and keep going. Now look, Sure, I can gun it and get by you on the left, okay? But if you're still rolling and I can't see your eyes that you've seen me, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know if you're blasting the stereo, you know, listening to freaking, you know, Drake and, mm-hmm. and bobbing your head and yeah. not even noticing that you're I'm there. You're on the phone, yeah. Yeah, you're on the phone. Who, who knows, man? Cars are fucking silent now. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I don't know if you've noticed me or maybe you're just getting over to fucking turn and you're going to try to change lanes. I don't know if you're still right. rolling. I'm right. still, I've still got to be extra cautious of how I'm driving around you because I don't know how, how what you're going to do. So please people, please, if you see lights in your rear view mirror, you, you might not even hear the siren because you're blasting the radio or whatever. If you see lights in the rear view mirror, pull your car safely over as far as you can to the right and stop. Now, that being said, if you are in traffic, okay, 
and an ambulance is coming up behind you. And the only thing you can do to get over to the right is stick. The farthest you can get over is sticking your front of your vehicle into the next lane. Yeah. I still can't get by you. <laughs> Just because you're. Your the front of your vehicle is over and out of the way doesn't mean the ass end of your vehicle is, right. is out of the way. Exactly. Okay? You guys got to be aware of yeah. that. You got to get your ass end out of the way. Okay. Because I'm gonna trip yeah. over it if, it's I, if I'm cool. trying. Cool. It's not just turn. You have to get over. Okay. Yeah. So, so the whole point of pulling to the right is that you get all the way over to where it's safe and you stop so that I yeah. can figure out what my best path is to right. get through this traffic. With an ambulance, pretty simple, man. It's, I mean, that ambulance is like. It's it's yeah, like whipping a, whipping a yeah. suburban or something like that, yeah. right? Uh, but when you get into the engine, and then the truck, it becomes a lot more difficult. Um, you you know the truck has a tillerman on the back that controls right. the back wheels, right? And the main purpose of that position, uh, as far as driving is concerned, is he has control of those rear rear wheels. So right. So uh, it, you you know he can weave in and out. He, we can make tighter right turns and left turns, and he can whip that ass end around. Uh, so that you don't catch the curb or, or catch the, you know, um, uh, a parked car or something like that. So when you, especially when you see a fire engine or a fire truck coming down the street behind in your rearview mirror, it's, it's even more important that you pull as far over to the right as you can and stop, pull over to the right, get your car straight, you know, lined up with the street and stop. And that allows the driver to be able to see the path in front of him that he can maneuver through the traffic. The second people start, but and 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 listen, I understand that driving down the street, moseying down the street, listening to Nora Jones, you know, uh, chilling. You got me. Uh, you're you're, and then all of a sudden there's a big ass fire engine behind you. <laughs> You know, blasting yeah. the air horn. Like, oh, ah. I, yeah, yeah, it's. I realize that that it can be terrifying yeah. for people. A little jolt. You gotta collect yourself. <laughs> you gotta do it. You gotta do it, buddy. Collect yourself. Take yeah. a deep breath, man. Part of being a motorist, bro. Put that blinker on. Look over your shoulder and and just maneuver where you can get safe. Now, there is nothing that says that if you can't pull over to the right because there's cars there or whatever. Right, everybody else is stopped also. Right, because the fire engine's coming. Mm -hmm. There's no rule that says you can't keep going forward and pull over where you can, right? Yeah. Pull over, pat, you know, get past this traffic and then pull over. For some reason, people, some people feel like they need to be in that's like, right when I see this engine, I got to pull to the right right there. No, man. Right. The whole point is that you get the hell out of the way. Get out of my way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? I Seriously. Don't, I, yeah. I honestly don't care what you do. As long I, as you're I, not I in front of just me. Just get out of my yeah. way. Yeah. Just get out of my way. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm honking my horn at you, it's I'm not really mad at you or 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 any. I just want you to get out of my way. Right. And just like you said, if you're honking that that <laughs> Ferrer calls it the hate horn. <laughs> <laughs> the air horn, because it's like <laughs> it's, that's the fucking eh, you know, it's mm -hmm. like when somebody cuts you off or whatever, but you can also beep that thing, you know, and yeah. we I use it at every intersection. Um you know, because it's important to be loud and be seen, obviously, when you're driving emergency. Um, but uh, is that the you one know, that's still on the foot pedal? In the yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you know, I'm not mad at you. I just want you to get out of the way. Right. Right. And that's a, another thing to remember as a driver too, though. Is that people do freak out? Oh yeah. People do lose like temporary insanity, dude. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when mm -hmm. I've. I've had people, I've had a lady stop in front of me, like just stop in front of me. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Right? And she would and not she move at not all. Moving. Yeah. Okay. And there's nowhere to go. The the rest of the street is open. She's no, I mean just, for you. There's nowhere to go for me because I'm already yeah. behind her. I know. Now, yeah. Right? I got to yeah. back up to go right. around her, right? And I'm just like, yeah. Oh. Get on the PA. And this is where I I ha I'm telling you as a civilian to gather yourself and and and, and collect yourself, right? Ma'am, this is where <laughs> I have to do it, okay? Because it's very easy to get on that PA and go, get out of the way, yes, right? Yes. And then everybody in the entire intersection and the people up in the and the people filming you and the little kid that's waving at you going right mm -hmm. hears you be an asshole over the PA, right, right? right. 
forget the fact that somebody can call and complain that you, yes. you know, said yes. a profanity or whatever, mm -hmm. it, and it does happen to you, trust yeah. me. Uh, the main concern for me, at least, it, it, th that I've developed over the years is, and the reason that I try to collect myself, and actually my, my old partner, Savon Gerard, is uh, the, the reason that I do this, right? Because mm -hmm. I used to be that guy. Pull to the right, you know, with all <laughs> kinds of attitude, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, he he's the one that, uh, he's the one that kind of sat me down. And was like, or we were talking on the way back from the hospital, and he's like, you know, people they're usually do they get stuck like that when they're freaking out, you know? Right. Oh, it's almost like an anxiety right. attack. So, do you think it? Do you think oh, it, he I, said this to you? He said this to me. Ah, yeah. Do you think it's better to increase that anxiety by yelling at them or calmly saying, "Ma'am, pull your car to the right, please," you know that. That that's a, a that's a calm order right. from an authority figure, right? As opposed to a Getting booming voice at. from the heavens screaming at you, you know. And I was like, "Fuck, man, you're right, you're right." So, so that you know, I'll grab that thing, and compose myself. Please pull your car to the right, right? And then usually they'll pull over, and then usually they'll pull over one lane. <laughs> it's like. Pull all the way over, man. I got this big ass ambulance. So now you got me squeezing between you and the and the center yeah, divider. You know the what I mean? Island, yeah. And I'm just like, and then that's when they get that final hate horn. You know, yeah. as you're as right as you're passing, I'm just like, you know, yeah. Bushes scraping your mirror. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I got just, you, dude. Yeah. So, for the love of God, people, okay, please, please, you see lights in your rearview mirror, you hear a siren, pull your car all the way safely to the to the right. If you don't have room to pull over to the right, just keep going forward until you have room to pull over. And for nothing else, please know that it's also illegal to not do that. You can yeah. get a big honking moving violation for that. And that happened in my face once. And it was the greatest thing ever. I'm ripping down Century to, to get to a call, lights and sirens. And this car in front of me just is cruising Yeah, right in front yeah. of me. Won't move, won't move. Yeah, yeah. Then a, a motorcycle cop, Ingo PD, boop, 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 lights him up. I was like, hell yeah. I never seen that in my life. It was like, dude, this, this is amazing. Just instant the justice. Like, the you, euphoria, you got burned, bro. The euphoria. Right? I, there's no other sensation like that. It was it's so, so weird, beautiful, dude. Right? Um, it, this was like five blocks of this dude just right in front of us, nowhere to go. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. and like, dude, oh, I've been there, dude. dude. I, I felt I felt the glorious it was warm, unbelievable. warm feeling of of revenge, right? Yes. Uh I'll tell you even better than being a driver and having that happen is being the guy in the back with the patient, hearing the driver bitch about that driver, and yeah. then getting a front row view through the back window of, of that driver cops? getting yeah. pulled over, yeah. you know? And right? you're like, Fuck yeah. Yeah. It feels like uh like you're like on a like Duke's a hazard or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the cop car crashes. It's the you best. Know what I'm saying? Dude. Or cannonball run or some it's shit like best. that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll t nothing drives me crazier. And and for different reasons, man. It's super frustrating. Especially like if you have um uh like we had Melissa Galliano in here talking about the fourteen year old uh cardiac right. arrest at, at the park. Yeah. If you have a call like Episode that thirty nine. If you have a call like that and some asshole is doing that, you know? Or I've had, when I was uh, at nines, you know, a critical patient I'm trying to take to the hospital, and some uh, homeless dude that's all methed out just in front of the rig. Ah! I'm like, yeah, this is not the time, bro. Like, ah! yeah. I'm like, get this, op open the door. Get the hell out of the way, man. Yeah. Right? I got to, uh, so, I'm trying to save somebody's life right. here, right? That shit happens a lot, man. Yeah. It happens a lot. See, and that's, a, that's another thing to talk about, too, because there's responding to the call driving, and then there's also a patient in the back driving. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That's two different kinds of drivings. You're still going emergency. You're still hauling ass, but you also have to be conscious of it's basically an exam room behind you, and you're going to shake the shit out of it. Yeah, and and – Everything, every movement is exaggerated back there. So if I'm yes. if I'm cruising and I'm I'm trying to get this, you know, dying kid to the to the EDAP, um, uh, you know, you want to drive fast, you want to get there, but but even like um, even like uh, avoiding a, a hazard in the road. Mm -hmm. If you're going if you're going at speed on on our ambulances, which is the big box, uh, uh, um connected to you know that just a truck chassis but it's almost right. like a it's almost like a um it's almost like a truck you know yeah, the box like, like a box truck yeah and uh so if you just oh just to avoid something or a squirrel jumps out at you mm -hmm. that it, that will toss everybody right. around in the back okay right now you got to keep in mind too that we're starting ivs back there 
We're measuring out medications. We're you know? intubating. We're intubating. We're doing a lot of shit. You know, I might be doing a needle decompression where I got to get between two ribs and shit. We're we're doing. Sh- yes. Maybe I can't get an IV on this arm, so I got to straddle the patient and hold his right arm and support myself on this thing while I'm trying to start a 16 in this guy who's bleeding out and doesn't have any veins because it's a trauma. Right. You know? S- the driver is super important to us back there because he can either make that impossible. Because I'm jumping around and mm-hmm. getting tossed around back there. Or he can keep or it Or he steady. can keep it as steady and straight as possible and then accelerate in those straightaways to pick up speed. You know, yeah, because he time. still has to haul ass. But then you you slow down on the turns. You slow, right. you slow way down as you're going into the into the yeah. driveway because the whole rig will go like this if you hit it at an angle. There's mm-hmm. all kinds of shit yeah. you have to yeah. and you can't break be hard. aware of. Yeah. You can't break hard all I that mean, stuff. I mean, this is what happened on my first innovation, dude. When I was an intern, I had this, uh, it was an elderly woman that had a suicide attempt. She just hacked off both ACs basically right just bled all through her place right so get her get her packed to roll real fast and you got to hit the innovation in in the back of the rig i got it but then that same thing happened a turn and i hadn't let go to uh, because i hadn't told the security yet i was holding it i almost pulled it out Mm. i nailed it and i almost pulled it right out that happens you know what i'm saying all the time with ivs yeah with ivs yeah you'll you'll hit it boom perfect you know and then you, you know, you hit a fucking a funky turn. Somebody pulls out of a driveway in front of you. Yeah. You know, whatever, and yeah. it comes out. Yeah, and that's, then that's it. You that, lost that little it. tube. It's like now, I was like, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, man. yeah, dude. Now not only did you lose the the IV, but now you just hit his biggest vein. Yeah. And poked a hole in it. Now he's now bleeding it's everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't do it yeah. again. Yeah. So driving, man, it's 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 like I said, it's important on me for my safety for the people that are behind me, for the people on the road, you, you know, you can see now how it affects all those things. Right. So you mentioned uh, tiller truck driving, right? Yeah. So that's another thing. A lot of times when you do see that truck going, they are responding to a fire or something something serious that they are needed for, you know, right away. If, so you, can if, see if them you see them going license service and they've got, yeah, Turnouts everything on. on. There, there's something fire related. There's that something going happening, yeah. right? And so you, and yes, you can see them hauling, hauling ass. ass, and you can see them cut turns sometimes. That they're like, how the hell did that? Did I just see that right now? Yeah. Like who who does that? Like it's like like a, like a snake, like a quick snake. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's I'm assuming practiced and coordination. You know what I'm saying? Like that yes. the, the the Tillerman knows the knows the AO. Yeah. Well. So there's a whole there's a, there's a whole um. Uh, training to be a, a tillerman, you have to get certified by as a tiller. By, by you have to get tiller certified. Yeah, but so, that happens like in house, right? That like happens they just in take house. you out for the day uh, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It'll be it'll be something that will take you know the uh, the new guy that got there, and you'll go to a parking lot first. You'll yeah. set up cones to to. Do you um, do this like at your rookie truck house, or this is no. when you're already a fireman? Usually not. If okay. you're an ace, they might do it. Okay. Usually, when you when your uh, uh your truck house is a rookie, it's usually your first first house, house right? You, usually, or it yeah. was for me at least. Um, so you can't have an engine house first house, but you, usually it's your truck house, and there's just so much shit you got to learn, and you're not going to be tiller in anyway. So yeah, that tiller position is doesn't like the matter. Last thing. But yeah. if you're a fucking ace, like um, we were working on getting Victor uh Aguirre in here. Victor was a captain that uh uh got his hands burned at that Boyd Street incident. Uh, yeah, in nines first in, but Victor was um. Uh, one of my instructors in the drill tower, and he was also a firefighter at Nines. At Nines, yeah. Um, and uh, my captain at Nines, uh, Pat Hayden, who just retired, I believe, um, a great guy, he uh, would talk about Victor and and uh, flat out told us, that dude is the best rookie I ever had in my life. I was going to say, you said like he was like a, like a stud AO he, too, he right? was. He goes, that guy is the best rookie I ever had in my life. He goes, he was driving the truck he goes, forget Tillery. He really? was driving the truck in his first house here at nine. So it's safe to say if you are a first house rookie and they decide to give you tiller training, you're probably you're doing killing, pretty you're good killing it. Yeah. yeah, you're doing All pretty right. fucking good kid. Yeah. Um uh and then you know, you go to you go to a parking lot, you practice backing, you 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 practice actually feeling how, how it reacts and stuff like that. I hadn't even thought about that you have to practice backing. Oh yeah. That's funny, yeah. Oh well, yeah, well, obviously because you have to back into the station too. Well it's like um it's like backing a um a boat into you know, to put it in the water. You, yeah. everything's everything's backwards. So right. like when when you're backing into quarters and you're sitting in the in the tiller bucket, right? You gotta turn this way completely and look back right 
and you have your hand on the bottom of the wheel. And as you're going down, there's a little line on the window and lines on the on the ground that you line up. If you want it to go that way, you got to yeah, turn, turn the, wheel the other that way, way right. right? So you're basically keeping your hand down here. And if I want to go that way, it's such small corrections as you're backing in and, mm -hmm. you're, and you're talking to the AO at mm -hmm. the same time, right? right. There's a, a beep system on the truck. So the AO will get in the front of the truck and I have to get in the tiller bucket and hit my foot pedal in order for him to start the rig up. So let's say we get a fire, right? I'll, we, we, uh, you know, we're upstairs in bed. We fuck, hit that pole, we slide down, get all our shit on. I climb up into the tiller bucket. My coat and everything, my coat and, and ax are up there. My pants and shit are down here. Some guys keep their coat down, whatever. Uh, throw your pants on, throw your coat on, climb up the side into the tiller bucket, get in and put your foot on the, on the buzzer. Mm -hmm. okay? That way it's ready, ready to go. When yeah. he, because he might be getting dressed, putting his coat on, and he's got the map right there. He's looking at the map. He's yeah. planning out his route. route he's yeah. thinking about what other companies are coming, mm -hmm. where they're going to be coming from. You know, maybe, oh, they're going to, five's going to be coming from here. I'm going to take this route around here or whatever, right? Right. So that way, when he gets in the rig, he can just get in, hit the button, and start mm -hmm. the rig and take off. You right. made another good point there. When you have a bigger emergency response, like a structure response or something, where you know there's like three other companies coming, you do have to consider that you don't run into them. Oh, absolutely. You could true. both, because you could both become an emergency and hit the same intersection and for all you know. And it has happened multiple times. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and a lot of times those are some of the worst accidents, man, because yeah, you're, both you're both ripping. Hauling it's like ass, two freight trains, kind of. Two fucking freight trains, man. You're talking about huge, huge uh, rigs with a lot of weight and a lot of force behind them. And on top of that, that's half of the response to a possible fire that is now ripping even more yeah. because which no is, one's coming. Which is exactly why I said at the beginning. It's all of that shit, all of our training, all everything goes out the window if we don't get there safely. Full circle. There was another, uh, there was an accident somewhere, I can't, I can't remember the department that it happened, it was maybe 10 years ago. Same thing, two engines going, or was a truck and an engine collided. I want to say Monterey Park? I might, have, I might be yeah. tripping. Um, collided, and then that engine, after the collision, ran into a donut shop. Jesus. It took out all the seating in the donut shop. So it's I think I remember that. It was like Alhambra or something. Alhambra. Yeah. I think it was Alhambra, yeah. That's right, dude. Um, I remember that incident. We so, had that as an MCI. And, and and you know, that's an extreme version of what can happen, but fuck man, it can it can happen and has happened. Um another thing you ought to be aware of too are trains. Like yeah. Trains. That's true. Uh mm -hmm. train can delay our response. Okay. We do not we go through red lights and shit, right? We do not go through train crossings, all right? If the oh, if the things down, if the things yeah. down, yeah, we, we don't we don't mess with that. Even uh, the new metros, you know, not all the intersections that the metros go through have actual right, uh, right. Uh, it's just the light. It'll just and be the, the bells, light. yeah. So even like going through ship malfunctions, man. You know what I mean? So even like green lights and, and the train tracks, you slow, yeah, stop, and look, look and make sure that there's no fucking train because when I was. Uh, I think it was when I was at nines. I want to say it was truck 14. And I might be wrong, but I think it was truck 14. Okay. Was responding to a fire in a nines first in. It was like an afternoon. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so downtown right there, down Washington is one of those streets where they, it doesn't have bars. It's just right down Washington by like um, uh, uh, um, San Pedro, right? Where, where nines is. It's just the train running down the middle of Washington. There's no guardrails. There's no nothing that comes down. Mm -hmm. So they were responding to a call, had the red light, the AO went through, and as he's going through, notices a train coming. Jesus. Fucking guns it, and the train catches the fucking tiller bucket. Ho, 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 ho. Yeah, whipped it around. I don't remember the injuries or anything, but but it happens, man. Yeah. It happens, and it happens. And the guys at 14s, we, we talked about those those um uh, stations that have their own cultures oh, yeah, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. The guys at 14s are the cowboys. Like th those right. guys are firefighters, man. They right. know they know what the fuck to, uh, they're doing. Yeah, and, they, and then drivers know how to drive. Guys with experience. That's like a, that. those are the guys who are talking about. Like you'll see them whip that thing around. Oh yeah, yeah. And if you have a if you have like an old school AO, um, uh, dude, some of these dudes that uh, or even you know one of one of the. AOs at my station, guy with some time on, and the guys that I came up with, those, <laughs> those old timer uh, AOs, man, they didn't give a half a shit uh, uh, if uh, what you knew. You just better keep up. 
Yeah. Right. Uh, I don't care that you're new at tillering. You're certified. Keep keep the fuck up. Yeah. I'm gunning it. And yeah. you and you're back. You have no control of how fast. Exactly. Or whatever. You're kind of just like along for the ride. Oh shit. He, oh, shit, he oh, shit, might oh, shit, oh, shit, he oh, might see an opening between a car in the street and a parked car here, and and I can shoot that gap and gun it through that. But you got to understand that also a driver in the front seat of a truck has like a uh, like a sliding glass door in front of him basically for the windshield right i mean he can see everything through that windshield it's even curved so he can he can see damn near everything when you're in the tiller bucket driving man you have big time blind spots next to you oh yeah so so you're and, and the and the the aerial in front of you so yeah, you're because you, it's a weird seat you know what i mean you're, 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 you're bouncing back there you're yeah, holding you're like you're a up. lifeguard but you can't really, it's not, you are perched so you can see loom ups, you can see the buildings and stuff like that if you're coming up to a mm-hmm. fire. But I mean, from the perspective of like, like, like the person driving an SUV or something, you're way elevated. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So, so you can see all these things up here, but you can't see the road right in front of you. You're seeing right. the road, you know, 40 feet in front of the truck, right, basically. Right. So a lot of your driving is spent peeking over this way, peeking over this way, looking at parked cars this way. Oh shit. Oh yeah. shit. Looking where he's going to squeeze it. Right. And oh, there's a car there. Oh, OK. Uh, uh. Now, another thing you got to keep in mind when you're driving back there is how many times did you turn that fucking wheel? Right. Because if he whips a left. Right. You got to do the opposite of what he does. Right. right? So you got to keep your hand in one spot. OK. I keep my hand in this one spot. Yeah. If he's going to go left, depending on how fast he whips that and how close to the curb he whips that. If, he, if he's far enough out, I don't have to do shit. It's just like a, a tractor trailer. He right. can, he'll just pull me along, and that's right, fine. Right, right, A really, really good AO, well, the majority of the time, that'll be the deal. You just yeah. hold that wheel straight, and he's going to drive you where yeah. you need to go. But the tight turns. The tight turns. If I got to – if he turns left and I got to whip it right, mm-hmm. if I go uh, uh, three turns, and then we make the turn, and I got to straighten out, right? One, two. If I only go two – that ass end is going to keep swinging out. You see what I'm saying? Because I yeah. still have one turn to go before I straighten them out. So you're driving to the fire. You're looking for a luma. You're thinking about what your job is. You're trying to picture the building that you're going to because you have to have been down this street and seen the building. You're trying to remember what it is that's there. Then you're trying to remember what it looks like on the inside. Right. Then you're trying to remember where you can stick a ladder right? Yeah. as a tillerman. And while all that is going on in your brain and the radio's c- coming with uh, updates and the captain's talking to the AO and yeah. all that shit, right? You're still looking around and you got to count how many damn times you 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 turn that wheel, right? You turn mm. that thing. One, two, three. All right, we're straight. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Sometimes you fuck up, man, and you'll go- be going and you'll feel it start going, oh, shit. Right. You know, and it straightens out and you're like, oh, and nobody says anything. Like, yeah. I can't even tell you how many times you're up there and you almost hit a parked car or something like that. Or you, you oh, know, I'm that sure, term dude. was doing, you're just like, Oh fuck, yeah. Oh shit. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's um, nerve wracking to say the least, dude, I'm especially, sure. especially where it depends where you work too. You know what I mean? Like yes. I learned how to do all that shit at nines. Tight, yes. Tight ass. Streets, you don't know what's in the street too. One way streets. Yes, you know what I mean? Dude. People doing whatever the fuck they want. I can only yes. imagine what it's like in New York. Oh God. You know, yeah. It's I know, crazy, dude. man. Yeah. I got a story. I got a driving story. Yeah. I'm going to tell you guys a story of the worst accident I've ever been in while driving an ambulance on the fire department. Mm-hmm. How much time we got? 20. Okay. This was, I don't know, man, 10 years ago. I was working at uh, Fire Station 57 uh, where I, I was assigned there for uh, like three and a half years. And uh, I was driving Rescue 57. And it was the middle of the day. We got this call for a um, chest pain. We get there, and it's this old lady, and she's having chest pain. And uh, we hook her up to a monitor. She's in rapid AFib. And uh, couldn't get it to convert, so we, we get, get her in the ambulance, you know, start an IV and, and stuff, and uh, and uh, get her going to the hospital. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, to get to Marina to uh, Sentinel Hospital from mm-hmm. where we were at in 57th District, the main thoroughfare would be Manchester Boulevard. Right. Okay. Or Man- Manchester Avenue? Manchester Avenue, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Manchester is a pretty big street. Right. Uh, uh, what is it? Six lanes? Six lanes across, something like that. Something yeah. like that. It's yeah. really wide, big, yeah. big, wide open Goes street. Long. Middle of the day, okay? Um, all green lights. 
Mm-hmm. I'm hitting green lights. Cool. Right? Everybody's pulling over. Yeah. All this shit I talked earlier about all you civilians and the way you drive and the things you do when, yeah. when you see. You guys none, are nailing it. None, it's like you guys listened to this podcast and heard right. heard my words and pulled over and did everything I just said. Okay? Everybody's and doing that. You made a good point, too, when you said all green lights. Because I think people assume that we just blow red lights. No. But you actually stop at every red light and check. You know what I mean? You're, you're, yes. You're, 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 there's nothing that allows you to do that. Yeah. We're, our LAPD, our LAFD policy is you stop at every red light and every stop sign. Okay? Right. You kind of turn red lights into a stop sign. Yes. You look, check, and go. Um, uh, you look, you know, you pause, look, go when it's safe, right? Right. So a lot of times if you are approaching a major intersection and it's a red and you slow down and there's nobody there, sure, you, you can accelerate through it. Right. But the point is uh, you are supposed to stop uh, right. at every every um, stop sign, yeah. stop sign, stop light. So all green lights does make a difference. All the green lights makes a difference in how fast I'm going, how the flow of it. I mean, you're only supposed to go 10 miles above the, the speed limit. Right. I, was, I think I was going like 45. It's another thing like people that, don't right? know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're not. We don't just. It's have not a, just reckless driving. Yeah, we don't yeah. just have a free for all to go do whatever we want. The only the thing you can really do is that you can use all the lights, <coughs> but you still have to. Yeah, stop yeah. at red lights, stop signs. You know, you can't go too fast. Yeah. So so go on. So we're driving. We're, we're we're driving. I'm doing like 45 between 45 and 50 down Manchester, right down the center. I always drive right down the center of the street. Right. Okay. One one uh half half the vehicle in the oncoming and half the vehicle in this one. That kind of forces people to pull over. Right. Even if I got plenty of room over here, if I stay on this side, everybody can. Ju- everybody's just going the same speed over here. And right. if something happens where I me- need to maneuver over there, it's more dangerous. Right. So I I was taught uh, with the with the engine also driving emergency drive straight down the, that middle of the road if you can because then people will see that you're coming down and it it will force them to to see you and pull over. Right. Even doing that sometimes people don't fucking pull over, dude. It's crazy. So, anyways, I'm uh, cruising down the middle of the road. It's all green lights. We approach a, a small intersection, and um, and everybody's you know stopped. Uh, uh, everybody pulls over. I, I approach the intersection. There is a uh, like a like a like a box van uh, right at the front of uh, like waiting for the, the light to change. Right as I'm approaching the intersection, like front wheels in the crosswalk getting into the intersection Mm -hmm. a compact vehicle goes around the far side of the box truck okay so i didn't see it Mm -hmm. until it popped out from from behind the box truck as i'm doing 50 with a green light okay i watched it felt like slow motion man i watched this lady i saw her when she popped out she had her phone in in her hand like Mm -hmm. this i hit the air horn and the brake at the same time okay I had enough time to say fuck twice. I went fuck, fuck, boom. Center punch her door, her driver door. Okay, this is with our new uh, Dodge ambulances, mm-hmm. man. These are big, big right. hunks of metal, and I'm doing. So she was crossing around like a red light, or yeah, I'll get change? to that. Okay, I'll sorry. get to that. Yeah, that's where I, I got lost. I have my I have my theory on exactly what happened, and I think it's accurate. Okay. As I'm approaching the intersection going through here. This is a cross street. There's a box truck waiting to on the cross street to, oh. to, to go. Oh, there wasn't a lit intersection? Yes. It's oh, a it light. was. Okay. I had a green light. They got had it, a red got light. It, got it. She pops out. She ran the red in front of me. Okay. And I tagged her. On the She re- popped out on the right of the box truck? Yes, on the opposite side. So I'm coming this way. I'm traveling westbound. Uh-huh. The box truck is facing south on the side street at a red light. She was behind the box truck went around him on the right side so I didn't see her right until she popped out. Was she gonna try to make a right or something? I don't know. Let okay. me finish oh, the yeah, story, sorry, man. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. So she pops out. I hit this car. Okay. Cause I will answer that yeah, at the okay. end of the story. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. I, I'm a good storyteller. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Keep, so, keep keep the beats, bro. I I tag her, dude. I shove her a good 30, 40 feet into two other cars coming eastbound. Okay. That's how fuck. That's how hard we hit. Okay. All right. So she crossed the whole ass street. She crossed right in front of me as I'm trying no, I'm to saying, after you around, hit her, and then I hit her across the, the entire street. intersection yeah. into two cars that were waiting that had stopped that were facing east. Okay. Boom, boom. Okay. But oh, those cars were stopped. Those cars were stopped. Okay. Everyone, yeah. Everyone's yeah. fucking yeah. stopped, dude. Except her. That's, yeah. Hence the beginning of my story. Everyone's pulling over and stopping. Got it. Uh, now I'm stopped. I've crushed this dude, and my thought is. 
I just killed somebody. I killed somebody. No doubt in my mind, dude. And let me tell you something, dude. I've never felt worse in my entire life than I did for those 90 seconds till I got face to face with this woman. I thought I killed her, dude. I, f I didn't even know how, how to process it, man. I can't even describe to you what it fucking felt like to 100% have no doubt Be in your mind that yeah. you killed somebody, okay? Right. My partner in the back goes, what happened? And first words out of my mouth were, I just fucking killed somebody. I bashed my knee, my leg a little bit on the dash, right? Right. And uh, I opened up the, no, I put it in reverse and I backed out a little bit out of her car, okay? Her side curtain airbags had come down, so I couldn't see her. All I could see was a, the car completely smashed, right? So I got out and I hobble over to her passenger side. There's already people like looking in the window and trying to ask her if she's okay. And I look in. And she is, her door is pushed in halfway into her seat, okay? So it's called passenger space intrusion. It's one of the things that we look for to determine if somebody is a trauma patient in a traffic accident, right? Mm -hmm. So she had passenger space intrusion. Her door got hit so hard that it shoved her door into the space where she was sitting mm -hmm. and in, in turn hit her, right? All right. So she's... Her, her the door is squished halfway into her seat and she's squished between the seat or the door and the center divider. She is leaning over the center divider. There's blood coming out of her mouth. There's blood on the side of her face and she's like um, snoring respirations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Uh, I, uh, joy that this woman wasn't dead and, uh, immediately, f uh, what the fuck can I do? I'm in yeah, an ambulance. You gotta get to work, but you have somebody in the back. I'm of the in an ambulance, ambulance and the ambulance. I have busted. a rapid AFib critical, not critical, but a serious patient Someone's gotta get to the that hospital. needs to be transported. Yeah. Okay. I've got a woman here that's seriously injured by by my doing, whether it was my fault or not. I, I if, yeah. if I wasn't here, she wouldn't be in this situation, right? This is all going through my yeah. head. And you were just in an accident. I was just in an accident. That's secondary to all this. Yeah. I don't have anything to help this woman. I don't have jaws. I don't have. I don't have anything, man. Mm -hmm. So I run back to the rig. I put. I uh, call for a physical rescue assignment. Metro. Might have been OCD back there. Metro, rescue 5-7. We've been involved in an accident. We're at the intersection of blah, 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 blah. Fire department is involved. I need a physical rescue assignment. Okay. When you hear, because sometimes you'll happen upon accidents and you report it to Metro, right? Because you're on your way to a call or whatever. Right, right, right. You say, hey, there's a traffic accident at this intersection. Fire yeah. department is not involved. Please dispatch or whatever, whatever. Right. So when you hear fire department is involved, everybody on the radio mm -hmm. that's out and about goes, oh, right. shit, what's going on? Yeah. Oh, let's see what they're on, whatever, right? Now you call for a physical rescue. Everybody knows that's fucking serious. Right. Physical rescue assignment. You need you need the jaws. You need the yes. the, the heavy you. That means the car is fucked up to the point you got to physically rescue Take somebody it apart. out of this car. Yeah. Okay. So engine five seven was on a was on another run at that time. They heard me put out the uh, the call for a physical rescue, and so they hightail it over there. I went back to the rig, got my axe, and uh, I couldn't. I was trying to lift her hip up over the seat. I was trying to pull her over. I got I got a collar, put it on her. I was trying to get her hip up, and I couldn't get her hip up because her, her belt or something was hooked under the lip of the 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 top uh, of the center of the center console. Mm -hmm. So I got my axe and I buried it in the center console. And I popped that thing off, right, and mm -hmm. then I was able to get her hip and I pulled her hips up, and I was able to get her hips at least out from being squished. Right. Okay. And so now she's kind of there. She's still snoring respiration, but she's breathing. She's unconscious, and I'm holding C-spine for her, and I, there's nothing else I can do. And you've got to do this all alone. I can't. Yeah, my partner's in the back. So the, the, my partner's got a whole other ordeal going on in the back yeah. that I'm going to get into. So I'm holding C-spine on this lady, man. And listen, you know, we don't talk about religion and shit like that around here. <laughs> and and, and I, I'm, not, I'm not very religious at all, um, you know. 
I, I feel like I have a, a personal relationship with some kind of power that helps me along in this life, but to, to call it Jesus or Allah or any, but anything, right. I don't do that, right? I never prayed so hard in my life, man, than sitting in this car with this woman. Yeah. Um, she was older. I kept thinking about, man, does she have kids? Does right. she have grandkids? You know, yeah. do they, uh, fuck, sorry. It's all right. Do they, um, do they love her as much as I love my grandma? You know, do they right. love her as much as my kids love my mom? Yeah. You know, it was more than you. Think and about it's with face to face, patient. man. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like, yeah. like I've never been face to face with someone like, like I did this to you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And so I sat there and I fucking prayed, man. I prayed so hard. I was like, please, God, please, God, let this, this woman live. Please, please. I'll do anything. Just, just let her fucking live. Let her live, please. Could you hear them coming? I could at hear that them point? coming at that point. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the guys show up. Calvary comes, right? I hop out. And then uh uh Your guys came first? Uh, engine fire. I don't even honestly. You don't even dude, remember? I don't yeah, know. that part's a uh six six was there. Uh yeah, like um rescue six six came to get our patient, you know, the rigs totaled. Uh and and it's all happening now. Now now yeah. now the guys that don't have anything to do with this are here and they're cutting the lady out. It's just a regular old call for yeah, them. Yeah, took right? it over. Yeah, we're not seriously injured, but come to find out that the lady we had in the back. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we had um, uh, you know, obviously we have safety straps for everybody. There's a seatbelt for the firefighters back there, paramedics back there. Right. But also on the gurney, there's two straps that go over the patient on the gurney. I don't always do everything perfect or always dot my my T's and cross my I's, right? But especially back then, I was a younger fireman, you know, 10 years ago, a yeah. younger paramedic. I, I didn't always, I wasn't always the, the person that I am now professionally right. and, and, and personally. Not right? everybody is. Uh, and so so I, I wasn't perfect back then. I didn't always do the right thing back then. But this call, I fucking did everything right. I had the patient strapped down. I had the monitor on the bench. Yeah. I had a seatbelt going through the monitor, so it was strapped down to the to the, to the bench. Yeah, all um, procedures followed. You know, every yeah. everything being monitored on her, everything was done by the book, man. Right. What happened when we hit? Uh, since the impact was so sudden, and 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 uh, and uh, I was going, you know, forty forty five because I had green light. Mm -hmm. She slid the patient we had in the back. Mm -hmm. So if you can picture her feet are toward the back of the ambulance, head is toward the front, yeah. right, right behind my seat where I'm driving back to back is a jump seat in the back of the ambulance. That's mm -hmm. where my partner sits. Usually that's where, when you're riding and you're sitting in the back. If you're not doing patient care, mm -hmm. you usually sit in that jump seat. That's where the phone is to call the hospital. And you got a little light there and that's where you just sit. Yeah. And it's a captain's chair, right? Yeah. She slid head first out from underneath both straps on the gurney head first into the seat right between his legs and broke her neck from the impact. Yes. Okay. So I didn't know any of this was happening. Okay. Yeah. Cause, you're uh, cause I'm, I'm over there. Yeah. Uh, so they wind up trans transporting her six, six transports her and we both get transported to Marina Del Rey and get looked at. And, and uh, they sent us, sent us home for the day, bang my knee up a little bit. That actually was the, uh, first time I got a phone call from the mayor. That, oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's that, when you said Via Ragosa yeah, called you night, and you're Vier, at the hospital. Vier, Vier, okay, Via yeah. Ragosa called. No, I was at uh, home, man. Oh, at home. Yeah, I was at home. Okay. With, uh, I was at home and they fucked. That's right. Home. I remember that story. I didn't uh, know the rest of it. Uh, so, so that was it, right? We got done with that. The accident was done. You know, you got to do a whole accident report on right, the computer. Right, yeah. You got to do an F80 to get the rig fixed and all yeah, that stuff. The department and, investigates. And then, yeah, the department investigates. You have an uh, an accident. Uh, investigation hearing where you, where you go and you give you know you tell what what, yeah. what happened in your side of stuff right were those you through, off through work this at all thing. besides that day I don't think so okay maybe maybe just like a, a, a shift or two yeah well obviously anytime a, a city vehicle hits and injures anybody on the road there's going to be a lawsuit yeah of okay? course so obviously there's a lawsuit I get notified that there's a lawsuit both people were suing the department myself and my partner Okay, mm -hmm. the department and me and my partner personally. Okay. Because we did not, uh, I think the lawsuit said something about like us not properly securing her to the to the gurney or something like that. You were individually sued by your patient or also the lady that you hit? The lady we, we hit and the okay, patient. Okay, everybody. Both. Okay, got it. The merits of the case were the same. 
so they basically combined the case. The city did their own investigation, found that I didn't do anything wrong, and so they right. supplied a city attorney to mm-hmm. defend the city and both of us. Good. Uh, in in trial. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. Ultimately, it wound up being a five million dollar lawsuit. Okay, uh, personally. Uh, against me, oh, against, against my, you, against me, against uh, that's the judgment Ian, they were trying to seek against yes. you guys, not the city. Yes. Okay. Even knowing I didn't do anything wrong, it's fucking nerve wracking. Yeah, you having you that shit to go hanging it. over your head, right? Exactly. I got a family, I got a house, all this stuff, right? Yeah. And you never know what this. Justice and system, you already went through the go. incident. Yes. Yeah. So, <clears throat> uh, for a solid year and a half after that, I have this hanging over my head. Right. Maybe mm-hmm. even longer than that. Two years, maybe. Yeah. This incident. And we have meetings with the attorney, you know, talk right. about what happened, meetings with with these investigators, meetings with the deposition here, deposition there. Yeah. And um, I had this last deposition for the lady's attorney. So I show up, you know, uniform. And the lady shows up. It was the first time I had seen her since the accident. Walked in. You know, um, didn't really, I didn't see any deficits or anything like that. And I had heard that she had made a good recovery. She had, she got really messed up. I mean, yeah, a bunch of internal issues and stuff. So, you know, I give, I don't blame her for suing. She doesn't remember the incident. She doesn't remember having her phone. She's why she didn't have her phone, all stuff, right? Okay. I, I remember it all clearly. I don't blame her for, I mean, I, yeah, I don't blame her for suing. Why not? Yeah. So we're going through this deposition and they, everyone wanted to take a break or for whatever reason we took a break. And I'm arguing, obviously, that I didn't do anything wrong. She, right. She's the one that did everything wrong. The attorneys left and stuff. And it was just me and her and her son right there. Oh, they left you guys in the room together? Yeah. The, the um, what do you call it? The uh, court reporter. Court reporter was in there, too. But Okay. They stepped out to get something. It was, it was literally yeah. quick, like thir- 45 seconds. Okay. Um. But I, to- I, I wasn't supposed to talk to her. I mean, right. you know, I'm not supposed to. Yeah, no, I know, whatever. dude, I know. But I couldn't help it, man. I told her, I go, ma'am, I don't, I, I don't care about any of this. I honestly don't. If, if I were to go to jail, I it, it wouldn't matter to me seeing you sitting here right now. I go, it's, I go, I know you don't remember this, but she was I, completely recovered. Complete recovery, yeah. Wow. I go, I know you don't remember this, but. I prayed, I sat in that car and held you and prayed for you harder than I ever prayed in my life, you know, and yeah. seeing you sitting here in front of me right now with your son is a, it's an absolute blessing. Yeah. I go, so I, you know, I'm honestly just trying to tell the truth here. I hope you don't hold any, I, I, right. go, I just want to tell you that I'm sorry for this whole thing. You know, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I do this to help people. I don't, I don't ever want to hurt anybody yeah. and seeing you here is just like. I'm so relieved to see you right. fully recovered. And that could happen with any patient, whether you were that serious and you remember them and then you get to see them again, but especially in this situation. Yeah, it's different when I caused exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. I caused yes. it. You know what I mean? Like right. that, that. Because that weight, was, that weight was on you. So even though there's still a weight on you in this, she, desp- even this if deposition. She, even if she lived and had a deficit or her quality of life was changed. She lived. Even though it wasn't my fault, man. Yeah. I did that. I was part of the apparatus, the vehicle that fucking nah, did no. that to her. You, you know what I mean? hold that guilt. It's crazy. It's a crazy ass feeling. And that shit happens, man. That shit will take guys out of the field, man. Yeah. You know, get in a fucked up accident and uh, and hurt somebody, seriously hurt somebody, or seriously hurt somebody in your crew, mm-hmm. something like that. Right. That'll take guys out of the field, man. It fucks with your psyche. I mean, it's, it really does. So, uh, Anyway, we go through, we're preparing for trial. We're literally like at the attorney's office uh, day before trial, just prepping for testimony and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, he gets a phone call and steps out. And then he steps back in and he goes, well, the city just um, uh, settled. I'm like, what? Yeah, the city settled for 250000 Okay. All right. So we're admit- we're saying that I was at fault? No, no, not necessarily. We're just, um, you know, it was going to cost 300000 for the city just to put the trial on. And right. they've already spent 50000 on the attorneys and diagrams and all this shit yeah. that they already have. This is how they figure these things out. It's a business transaction. Yes, exactly. Now. That's it. That's all it is. at the bottom dollar. Yeah. And, just end it and close it. And uh, and so she got she got paid a little bit. The poor, the, 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 
poor lady that was in the back, she like missed a court date or something and fired her attorney for some reason and all her shit got thrown out. Yeah. What? Yeah, she was she was like, in my opinion, the one that should have gotten paid. So anyways. Yeah, dude. What I think happened in the oh, because this whole thing too was caught on tape. There, oh, okay. there was a security camera on a, ah, on a uh which like works a donut in your favor and exonerates you, yeah. But it doesn't have the lights. It cuts off before hey, the lights, right? Okay. So what happens is you see me coming down Manchester, okay? Car, car traffic's flowing. Now, right. as I get to the intersection, cars stop at the limit line of the intersection. Mm -hmm. Going the direct the direction that I'm traveling on Manchester. Right, right. They stop. Because I'm coming through the intersection. Yes. Okay. So what I think happened is this lady is waiting behind this box truck at a red light. Ah. She's on her phone. Mm -hmm. She's talking, whatever, sees the car stop. Mm -hmm. Goes, what the fuck is this guy doing? <clears throat> Goes around him, guns it. And that's where I, I hit her. She probably didn't even look at the light. Didn't look at the light. Mm -hmm. Didn't Definitely didn't look in my direction because I saw her the whole time. I watched her the whole time, dude. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Boom. Mm -hmm. Watched her yeah. the whole time. In slow motion. So that's, I'm 99.99999% sure that that yeah. is exactly what happened. And it makes sense, what but they she were doesn't remember. What they were arguing was that traffic stopped, so we must have had a red light. Mm. No, 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 no. Traffic is supposed to stop. You know, and I even had to say everybody was stopping as I, I was even thinking that as exactly. I was going down, like, holy yeah. shit, everybody's pulling over yeah. and stopping. Go, this everybody. is awesome. Yeah. You know? And then look what happens. Exactly. Yeah. Because you like we said, perfect ending of the story into this episode. You never know. You, you know? never know. dude. Even when it's going great, somebody might pop out right in front of you. Bam. Now you have a whole other incident. Yep. So yep. You, and a lawsuit. You, you constantly have to be on your toes. You constantly have to be defensive. You constantly have to be ready to hit the brakes. Um, uh, and, and ultimately, man, ultimately, getting there safely is the most important thing. Exactly. Getting there quickly is secondary to getting there safely. Exactly. And 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 getting there safely um, is assisted by everybody on the road. Okay? Not mm -hmm. just the driver of this emergency apparatus, but if you're out there and you're listening to this podcast, I know you've already gone and liked and subscribed and rated the podcast. I'm going to ask you to do that again right now. Okay. <laughs> but if you're listening, please, for the love of God, take everything I said on this podcast to heart. Yeah. Pull your damn car all the way to the right and yeah. stop. It's uh, not a joke. The front of your car being out of the way doesn't mean the ass end of your car is out of the way. Pull that. Pull, get, get that mm -hmm. ass out of the way, girl. Yep. Right? You know what I'm saying? We are not trying to drive too fast and too furious. And if anything, the lesson for the day is... Don't be afraid to hit the brakes and pull over. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Slow it down. Yeah. All right. Um, Danny, where can they follow you, sir? Yeah, follow me at Danny Gonzo thirty four at um, uh, where am I? Instagram and Twitter. I don't know what Friendster. I don't know what <laughs> MySpace. Uh, follow me at Ben Nine Humor. Ben Number Nine Humor, like the Nine Tumor. Clever handle on Instagram and Twitter. Follow the show at PRC Pod on Instagram and Twitter, or at PRC Podcast on TikTok. Email us, contactprcpod at gmail.com if you want any of our hot merch, t-shirts, stickers, centigrade clothing, shirts, all of that is available to you. Yeah, go to firefightercrafted.com, folks. You'll see a centigrade clothing um, uh, tab on there. There's also a uh, 63s tab on there where we're going to be selling all of the uh, centigrade uh, t-shirts. And centigrade is going to have the PRC t-shirts on it for uh, purchase as well. So firefightercrafted.com go visit there and browse uh we'll have new designs dropping once a month and that's it all right thank you guys thanks <laughs> yeah hey. hey all right hey yeah i mean so we better hey. take off hey uh please do remain calm about to run against it and with a little bit of soul no time